And welcome to this show, the Thursday edition of, uh, you know, Know the Cause here on Facebook, YouTube. Thank you guys for joining me. I want to discuss a couple of things. I know, I realize you can't type in questions right now, but boy, do I have plenty of them from the past two days. I'm doing some traveling now, uh, and I need to bring a couple of things to your attention. I have been concerned about this for quite some time. We're being watched. Uh, Folks, and this isn't the watching you think is going on. Look, I have kids, and I now have grandkids. And when you open up a computer, there's that little camera portal right there at the top of the screen. You need to put a piece of tape on that. All I'm telling you is you need to put a piece of tape on that. And if you use Skype or some other thing where the camera comes in handy, take it off and then put the piece of tape back on. That isn't what's concerning me. What concerns me is what's actually going on. I want to read you a couple of things. Are you sitting down? Are you ready? This is off MedPage Today. I really like MedPage Today. This is for doctors. Um, and it opens up, uh, what was the date here that this thing, 1128. CPAP or surveillance device. You snooze, you lose personal information to insurers. Um, I just, I have to tell you about this. Last March, Tony Schmidt discovered something unsettling about the machine that helps him breathe at night. Without his knowledge, it was spying on him. A CPAP machine. From his bedside, the device was tracking when he was using it and sending information not only to his doctor, but to the maker of the machine and the medical supply company that provided it and to his health insurer. Schmidt, an information uh, technology specialist from right here in Texas, was shocked. I had no idea they were sending my information across a wire. Now, let me read you this. Patients have been required to rent CPAP machines. This is another problem. Rent CPAP machines at rates uh, that total much more than the retail price of the device. Or they've discovered that the supplies would be substantially cheaper if they didn't have insurance at all were being gouged by insurance companies, duh. Experts who study uh, healthcare costs say insurers CPAP strategies are part of the industry's playbook of shifting the costs of widely used therapies and devices and tests to unsuspecting patients. We're guinea pigs. The doctors and providers aren't in control of medicine anymore, says Larry La Harry Lawrence, the owner of Advanced Oxy Medical Services of New York a company that provides CPAP supplies. And then he says, it's strictly insurance companies. They call the shots. Okay, we need to talk about this. Um, the gall, the gall, but that isn't all. FDA approves first smart pill that tracks drug regimen compliance from the inside of your body. This was last year. I have had this sitting on my desk for some time now. The FDA's approval of the first smart pill for use in the United States called Abilify, you know the drug Abilify, uh, Mixite, or MySite, Abilify MySite. The pill contains a drug and an ingestible sensor that is activated when it comes in contact with stomach fluid to detect when the pill is taken. The pill then transmit this data, transmits this data to a wearable patch that subsequently transfers the information to an app on a paired smartphone. From that point, with a patient's consent, did they get this guy's consent? With a patient's consent, the data can be accessed by the patient's doctor or caregivers, whoever they decide that is. This isn't okay. This is never okay, but it's being done. Have we become, has the pharmaceutical become uh, changed from what it's supposed to be? Are we being spied upon with medical devices? And when they say with the patient's consent, have you ever tried to opt out of things? Have you ever tried to unsubscribe? You're not unsubscribed. They're not going to let you go. You're still subscribed. 
Um, the world isn't what it used to be. And I think this is creepy. Can I use that word? I think it's creepy. First of all, may we talk about CPAP a little bit. 25 years ago, nobody died of stopping sleeping, of stopping breathing when they were sleeping. Now everybody stops sleeping at night. Do you suppose God put us together that way? I know sometimes I'm listening to my wife sleep or she listens to me sleep and gosh, there might be, you know, if I wake up, a noise in the house or something, there's this, come on, breathe again, honey, breathe again, breathe again, breathe again, breathe again, and nothing for what seems like two or three minutes, maybe four minutes, then you like that? Have you heard your spouse do that also? Um, but it's a medical manageable problem. Don't worry, we feel your pain. We're gonna have sleep specialist doctors put you in a room, set you up with datas, uh, data uh, wires, and record everything you're doing. We're gonna see, we get to watch you die because I know what's gonna happen. In that therapy box, you're gonna die, you're gonna stop breathing, but we're gonna breathe. Whew, thank God we were here for you. Some people may need this. Like everything in medicine, I believe it is grossly being oversold because a loving spouse heard what I hear on occasion, and my wife probably hears on more occasions. I think when we're unconscious, we go into states where we might not breathe for a period of time. Any of you know that who's that super, remember Mark Spitz in the old day, was it Mark Spitz or this guy now, who could hold their breath for two minutes when they're conscious? So just imagine, when they're unconscious. And yet that's a serious disease. We have this hunger to tell all of us that we're really, really sick. I told you yesterday about guys I have known that went in to get life insurance and ended up in some urologist's office because their PSA was 4.2. Honest to gosh, that's despicable to me. And yet, it's going on every hour of every day. How about this one? You go into the doctor and now you have hepatitis C. You need an infectious disease specialist and you need on drugs immediately. I went in for an insurance physical. I'm 40 years old, I'm in great health, I jog every day, I eat properly, I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke. Yeah, but you're gonna die. If you don't get on a CPAP machine or if you don't get on these drugs for your hep C, we don't know how you got it. Was the lab test? No, lab tests are 100% accurate. I think it's time we acknowledge there's a problem. The drug companies, I don't know them. They might be really good people. You know, my wife keeps telling me, stop it. Stop chasing these guys. They're capitalists. They're a $5 trillion business that wants more than anything what everybody wants, to become a $6 trillion business. And the way we do that is to find more unsuspecting takers of your wares and then track them to make sure they're swallowing your pills or make sure you're using that CPAP machine. And by the way, spiking the cost on it because you have insurance, oh, that's just the way business is done today, Doug. Does it benefit? us to have insurance then? Well, you have to have insurance. There was this president a few years ago that said you have to have. And now there are people saying it should be free. I don't know. I don't know. But my wife is so smart and I listen to her. This isn't my problem. It may be yours and I hope to do this show to open your eyes, not to change your heart, change your feeling, to open your eyes. This isn't my problem because I wouldn't take Abilify, whatever that is. I wouldn't ever do a CPAP machine. But Doug, what if you're 85 and you're gonna die? Bingo, then life's gonna stop. And real life for me is gonna begin. I'm not at all depressed about that. We are being grossly over-medicated and they admit it. By the way, they're trying to get pediatricians to stop prescribing all these antibiotics. You know what pediatricians are saying? Shame on mothers. 
pediatricians are saying those mothers are coming in here and demanding snotty-nosed kids have an antibiotic, so I give it to them. Whoa, you're the grown-up in the room, Doc. You're the one with credentials. Let me teach you to say something. No. It's really simple, two letters. No. Your child doesn't have a bacterial infection. It's against the law for a mother to demand that you treat with a drug that he doesn't need. Well, okay, Doug, I'm a little weak. I'm going to give him the drug. Nonsense. Shame on you doctors for doing this. And by the by, there's almost incentive by drug companies to keep doctors hyper-prescribing. Why know the cause when you can treat the symptom? I've long considered that a disease is a collection of symptoms that all look the same. And doctors are investigators. They're smart people, twice my IQ. And, and what they do, ah, oh, started with a headache. Mmm, blurred vision. Oh, dry mouth. This is brain cancer. These symptoms become a disease. So the best thing I think I can help you with is trying to understand to abort those symptoms when they come on. You know, I'm, remember the girl we talked about yesterday that slept next to the ducting in her dorm room? There was mold. We don't know if she died of mold, but some people are saying she did. Um, when she had the first symptom, the hacking cough, where's her mom? Where's her dad? What, did she call home? Where was she? Once again, these aren't my problems because I'm not going down that road, and I suspect many of you aren't either but millions of Americans are. And what I hope to do is just open the eyes, not shame on you for going on a CPAP machine. It's not my job. I, it's illegal for me to take you off a CPAP machine or tell you not to take, what is the name of this drug? I love drugs' names. Abilify. You're not able, but we'll abilify you with our drug. They say if you don't stand for something, then you'll fall for anything. And I think that's exactly, we are not stupid people. Give us credit. We're really, really sharp people, and yet we have become sheeple. We just follow the sheep in front of us. I'm going to the doctor for a physical. Okay, I will too. I'll never forget a, a book that was written by a urologist. I think he was here in Dallas. And the book was teaching women how to get their husband to a doctor. Duh. Think that doctor wants to see more patients? And now we have this enigma that's occurring in America. We have many, many millions of men that have been injured by the urologist. Got a couple friends with what I think is a normal PSA. The doctor doesn't. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I've talked to him on the phone. They've now done biopsies. One of them had the biopsy of his prostate clip a blood vessel and he urinated blood for a couple of days. Oh, sorry. This isn't my problem, but it's a lot of yours. What I hope to do, I notice many of you are writing in now and saying, um, you know, I'm staying away from a doctor. Once again, your choice. Don't ever let me make that choice for you. But is there another way? Do you know who buys most antibiotics in America? The agricultural industry to give to cows and pigs and chickens and whatever. You know who buys most herbs in America? I read this. I can't reference it. I read this a couple of years ago. The drug, the pharmaceutical industry. Why do some pills really work so well? Because the herbs in the pill. Did you know that gout medications like colchicine happen to kill fungus? Did you know that tamoxifen for breast cancer happens to kill fungus? Did you know that statin drugs that 30% of us are taking, please be careful, happens to kill fungus? Did you know that selective serotonin antidepressant medications kill fungus? Are you beginning to see why it is that this information hasn't caught on, but pills have. They're fixing your cholesterol levels because cholesterol levels must be linked to fungus or yeast in your bloodstream. 
this is what I try and teach you guys. You can use your fork and spoon to dig. Think of how long that would take. Just be reasonable for a second. If you had the time, you're a kid, you know, before you go to school, I want you to go out and dig. Uh, you got to give me 40 digs with that spoon today. Okay. By the time you're 80 years old, life expectancy, 90 years old, you will have dug an 86 inch long uh, grave that happens to be six inches deep. It took you a lifetime to dig that. Conversely, you can use that same spoon to eat properly. And maybe you're sure you'll go decades beyond that to have to drop into that hole. Use your fork and spoon wisely, but more importantly, use this. God gave us all a brain, right? I'm concerned that we people have become sheeple. And we're listening to any doctor's book that comes out. This upset me that a urologist would write a book directed to women because you women know how dear you are to us. And so many men, a couple of my friends included, have ended up in a doctor's office getting all the tests and pokes and jabs and so forth because a loving wife wanted him to do that. That loving wife was once a little girl. And her mom or dad said, you know, I don't like that cough. We're going to take you to a wonderful doctor. And the wonderful doctor prescribed pills. And the problem went away. So in our youth, we learn that maybe these pills aren't so bad. They fixed me of that problem. Happenstance is an interesting thing. I wonder what would have happened without those medications. Don't go down that road because sometimes bacteria can take you out. Um, I want to answer because, boy, you guys were on fire yesterday and the day before. Thank you for your concern, for your uh, time spent watching uh, this show. I d because I have a big TV show, I don't necessarily have to do this. I love doing this. This is much more personal. I get half an hour, an hour, hour and 15 minutes with you here. And I have little chips on TV because it costs millions of dollars to annually to do a TV show. Um, so I only get four minute or five minute segments to try and teach you. And I want you, the most important thing for me is for you to meet advertisers. Can I tell you thank you, by the way, to OptaVita? Uh, OptaVita is a newer advertiser with us. And thank you guys. I have gotten on Facebook and YouTube half a dozen of you telling me when I went on vacation, I, you knew I was going to be with my grandkids, to take these with me. <clears throat> and I did. This is the OptaVita Silver, the Nano Silver. Um, folks, what they've done is so much different. This isn't colloidal silver where it's held in suspension. They have virtually cleaved onto H2O uh, particulate of silver. I mean, you don't have to shake it. You know, this is the real thing. And don't you know I did take it and gave it to Rex, you know, my little one-year-old uh, grandson. Silver lozenges. Uh, many of you are now taking these. This is the same nano silver. These are tremendous products. They also have, thank you, John, they also have liposomal, meaning break the blood-brain barrier, um, curcumin. They have liposomal hemp. Um, this company, I'm telling you, this is an outstanding company. By the way, two of those big bottles for that $89.95, two of those big bottles uh, they will send you. Give one to somebody who's chronically infected, a friend of yours or something, and, and see how they work. They're one of our many, many clients. We have a Christmas giveaway uh, coming up starting December 4th. Uh, you will be uh, entered every day. You don't need to buy anything. Look at all those products. Those are my wonderful, dear advertisers, including OptaVita. Um, right there, they include NSC, Pioneer, Flexin, Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics, Long Life Unlimited, Poop Doc, OptaVita, Prevagen, Life Extension, Aloe Apex. How would you like all of those products sent to you? Well, if you're watching this December 4th, 5th, 6th, or the following week, those three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or the following week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you have an opportunity to win this. Um, and this guy, John, I'm thinking, <coughs> we're probably talking about 
four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. As I look at it over here in the uh, other studio, I walked in and thought, "Home run! I hit a jackpot!" Because they have nine. Do you see all that? We should just close and put all this on eBay and make a living. Um, but you qualify. This is our way. This is our advertiser's way of thanking you for enjoying this show. Once I, I happen to know this. Once you get their products and give them a try, um, you'll reorder. We have an interesting vetting system here. We don't just take every advertiser that comes on board. Have you ever seen a drug ad in my show? Uh, yet I have a 20-year standing health show on WGN, you know, on CTN, on, on TLN, Total Living Network, on, uh, gosh, uh, WACX-TV throughout Florida, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, I mean, it, uh, AZ-TV. This thing airs everywhere, and I don't take drug advertising. Probably be cool. I could make an extra, what, $6 billion a year. Uh, but, guys, I don't think the answer to getting well has anything to do with the pharmacy. If you let yourself go so long, then maybe. My job is to try and teach you to intervene on your own illness. We're taught throughout our whole life, honey, you can't fix that sore throat, let's go to a doctor. Honey, you can't fix those menstrual pains, let's go to a doctor. When in fact, use that spoon and fork. Change your diet, the first thing you should do how much lighter fluid would you put in a Mercedes before you see it stop? Fill your Mercedes with lighter fluid and see how far it goes. You put the wrong stuff in there. It's not going to run very long. And then you're going to take it into a Mercedes dealer, and if they're like a doctor, they're going to say, I don't know what's wrong. Put gasoline in your Mercedes. When it sputters, Put better gasoline. We have 93 octane here in Texas. They only have 91 octane in Los Angeles, where I'm from originally. Put 93 octane in your body, or better yet, 95, 99 octane in your body every day so you don't end up stopping by the side of the road. This is your choice. A CPAP, you're told it isn't your choice. Um, a Bilify, you're told it isn't your choice. But folks, we have decisions that we have to make every day in our life. And cleaved on to those decisions are outcomes. If you change your diet and you realize, wow, I took niacin, a B vitamin, and, my, and began an exercise program, like Doug said, and changed my diet, and I went back to the doctor the next time, and he said, wow, what, you know, he looks at your chart, I can't believe this, and, and your blood pressure is 118 over 64, He's going to fall off his stool. He's not going to believe it. He's not going to do that for you. That's my point. He's a really smart man or smart woman. She's a smart woman, but they're not going to do that for you. That license says they graduated from medical school. They can now prescribe drugs. Drug companies love them when they prescribe drugs. It's a relationship that I don't think is okay. I think there's a conflict of interest there. But I'm not involved in changing. You know why? I learned long ago, sitting one day in my living room with mom and dad, after I got back from Vietnam, all you've got to do is observe your parents. Um, wonderful, by the way, salt of the earth people. But they smoked. And they drank. And they went to doctors. And I remember looking at that, and this was back in my doctoring days. This was back when I still believed in pharmaceutical pills and the miracles of science and so forth. And I remember thinking, okay, they're sedentary. That's the most exercise, except mom. Mom was always a walker. Mom went outside and walked. Uh, mom died at 85 years old. She stopped smoking, you know, 50 years before when dad had all his heart problems. Um, she was an exerciser, and I think that dad died in his 70s, mom died in her 80s. And I think that took mom another, carried her on another decade or so by changing uh, her ways of what, you know, she and dad were doing. The same is true. I didn't like, remember that day, John, you shot that video of me? It was 35 degrees that day. 
And John came outside and the sun wasn't out and I was shivering, but I was wearing a long sleeve shirt. That wasn't great. <laughs> Thank you, there I am. <laughs> Look at that old bicycle. Um, that's outside of my man cave there. And I, uh, you see I had sweats on. Looked like the sun was out a little bit there, John. But there I am going up and down on that maxi climber. <clears throat> that wasn't a lot of fun. Um, but I have to do it. A builder wears a tool belt. He's got hammers and screwdrivers and wrenches and so forth. A car mechanic has his tools sitting in that box. I had better use my brain and therefore the blood should be going through my brain. My brain should be have oxygen in it. Here's one way I do it. <sighs> Only I don't like to sit at my desk and my computer and do that. <sighs> So I go over there to the man cave and I work that thing hard and it's a kicker. And then I do my push-ups and then I do my core stuff, my planks. Um, and I do that several times a week because this has to work. You wouldn't be watching this right now if this didn't work. If I was a physician, you probably wouldn't be watching this right now unless I was an integrative or complementary physician. Giving you tools. You see, the medical community's tools are pharmaceutical drugs and surgery. And some of you have opted for that. God bless you. I, th this isn't here to hamper any or, or judge any of those decisions. Don't judge, lest ye be judged. I don't want anybody to judge me. Um, rather, did you need that hip replacement? If you'd have gone on shark cartilage, if you'd have begun a walking program, if you'd have changed, it's weird to think that food can affect this but I guarantee you it does. Um, the, the gasoline you put in your Mercedes has everything to do with how well it runs. Now, a couple of these questions I wanted to get to. Do you believe that CPAPs are surveilling and spying on us? Do you believe, the? of course I believe the FDA would approve it, but do you believe there's now a smart pill, it's called? Do you know smart TVs? We're having a TV put in that home we're remodeling. Um, and I want to call the guy after reading this and make sure it's not a smart TV. You see, smart, dumb to me. I'll stay with a dumb TV. Smart TVs enable you to watch it, but them to watch you. Okay? I don't want that in my home. I'm sorry, nothing going on in my home that's too exciting. Who wants to watch a 69-year-old guy hobble around? But that's sick, and that's weird, and I think it's being done. So just be careful. I don't want any part of that. And we get to choose. I held a gun in my holster in Vietnam for the freedom that we enjoy today. Thank you, military. Thank you, police. Uh, that's what this is all about. We get to choose. We're still, we're not Turkey. We're not Afghanistan. We're not a communist nation. We get freedom of choice. I choose not to take medications. But you know what? The aging process sometimes chooses differently. Your body is deteriorating. You are rusting. Okay, And so someday, medications, I hope not a long time from now, might be the way for me to go. Until that time, that exercise, this different kind of a diet, the supplements I take are all part of my tool belt. They're what I do to bring you this show or the television show that we're blessed to bring to so many Americans every day. Uh, this gives me a little bit more of a satisfactory venue in that I know well, hundreds of thousands of people watch that TV show every day. But this is a little bit more personal. You can meet the real Doug Kaufman while doing this. I believe you're being spied upon, folks, and I know why. I want to know how many pills we're going to sell next month. I want to know how much money we can get that unsuspecting customer to pay for the CPAP machine over what he should be charged for it. This is going on. It's really simple, really simple. This, I thought, was fascinating. The EpiPen. Remember that company that bought, a young kid buys that company that makes the epinephrine pen? So if you have an allergic reaction, bang, bang that pen into, right through your genes, and, you know, the epinephrine can save your life. Uh, and I brought you, when I did that show on Tuesday about allergy, I talked a little bit about carrying epinephrine. But the doctors, the allergists, are so angry because only 40% of the people who need that EpiPen are getting it. 
I remember this company a year ago that came on, some young dude bought this company and he was charging three or four hundred bucks for, you know, a 19 cent pen. And everybody, you know, doctors all go, oh, that's sinful. Now listen to this. I pulled this off of uh, Morning Break. I love this. MedPage Today. MedPage Today. Any of you can read it. You don't have to be a doctor. Meanwhile, Teva, name of a drug company's generic epinephrine auto injector will end up costing just as much as the Mylan brand EpiPen, the one they were so mad about, $300. Gee, imagine that. They came up with the solution, but it's medicine. It can't be $29.95. Can't do that. We're in medicine. The military toilet seat that cost $52,000. Good example. How can we charge? Okay, we're making it for 29 cents. You know, what should we charge for it? How about $29? Huge markup, thousands of percent. No, let's charge $300. Because doctors, the salespeople for the pharmaceutical industry, will prescribe it. Then we'll get their insurance to pay for it. It's happening. It's happening. I'm only here to report. Uh, what do you do if you need... You know, isn't, that, isn't epinephrine what your dentist gives you? I remember one time I had to get something done here, and I have the most gentle old doctor, and uh, he gave me epinephrine. I, I mean, that little thing looked like it was 28 cents, you know, $300? Okay, now, do you remember this from the other day? Uh, receipt of antibiotic prescriptions in the first year of life is associated with food allergy diagnosis in young children. In this cohort study of 800,000 children, the hazard of developing an allergic disease was significantly, this is a medical paper, significantly means a lot. Normally they'd say marginally. Significantly. They're not given the number. It was significantly increased in those who had received acid suppressing medications, antacids for a six month old, or antibiotics during the first six months of life. Children who take lots of antibiotics have a propensity to grow up obese. The damage done by antibiotics doesn't occur when you take it. That's the relief. It's the 20, 30, 50 years later that you find your gut with all sorts of problems. Okay, now. So, Darla says, and thank you for joining me. Do me a favor. If you're watching me on YouTube right now, hit the bell, bing, uh, and uh, let, a, let them know that you like this, and thank you for being here. Uh, Darla says, so I've got to a holistic dentist, had five dental cavitations removed and two bridges, two crowns and a root canal, and I still have tons of health issues. I know I still have candida and a leaky gut. When I got all of mine taken out 30 years ago, I felt horrible for a couple of weeks. And that was with a rubber dam, with someone sucking out. Look, a, a dentist has to, you know, double mask those eye things to be around mercury. And yet, a two-year-old were plunking it in their teeth. <sighs> oh, what if they end up being sick in the future? Well, that's good for the drug companies. Um, so understand that if you're really hyper sick right now, you may be for a month. Uh, your doctor can order what's called a DMPS. I think it's called DMPS test. It's a urine test to tell how much mercury is being excreted from getting all that, uh, those problems uh, taken care of. Uh, and you probably do, you can have a concomitant problem. Folks, since mercury is also an immune system, you know, suppressant, just like mycotoxins and penicillin and so forth, um, they can cause you at a young age, six, seven years old, to suffer from declining immunity. Um, then along comes the first bout with moving into a moldy home and wham. So you can have concomitant problems uh, Darla, keep an eye on it. Eat well. Uh, Glenda, hi Doug, can't wait for your new book. What, if anything, can affect your health by having your tonsils removed when I was four years old? It's been 50 years ago. Thanks and God bless you. Glenda, you know what? I, this is great. Great, great, great. You guys are amazing. Brilliant question. I know just where you're going with this. 
I have been in this field so long, there was a period of my time, not in the middle of my life, but maybe since moving here. I moved here when I was 39 years old, you know, 100 years ago, um, that I began to get it. You could, I remember reading about grounding. You guys know what that is? Take your shoes off sometime and walk in your backyard, on the dirt, in the grass. That's so good for your body, grounding, electrically grounding yourself. But I read many years ago that be careful of cement, though. Don't walk on, and okay, it's gotten to the point, you guys, where we have become so paranoid. Glenda, you've lived 46 years after having those tonsils out, and you probably enjoy really good health. Um, we now understand tonsils kind of dominate where probiotics go. They, they teach probiotics where to go, right? Or no, no, that's the uh, appendix teaches probiotics where to go. Tonsils, we still, you know, when in doubt, cut them out, they used to say in the operating room. Um, they have a purpose. God put them there for a reason. Uh, evolutionists say, no, they didn't. They're from fish and their gills, and, you know, they should just be taken out. Whatever. Um, don't become paranoid. Walk on the cement also. Don't worry. I rem Where was I that I drank? I was taking my beta glue can and didn't have any bottled water, so I filled the sink with a glass and drank it down. <gasps> you should see everybody look at me. You drank that. Don't be paranoid. Don't be paranoid. The, the benefit of the beta glue can far exceeded the danger of fluorine and chloride because I rarely, if ever, drink it. Don't be paranoid. Don't look back with regret. Look forward with excitement. That's what I really do. Uh, should we have root canal teeth pulled? Um, there are dentists called biological dentists. And these people, they were the first two lecturers when I was lecturing at this event. Um, they're pretty cool, you guys. They have devices they can put on root canals or on metal amalgams. Mercury is part of it, but other, other metals. Uh, amalgam means an amalgamation of metals, and that's what your mercury filling is. It isn't just mercury, it's other things in there. Um, they have devices they can quantify. They, can, um, th they know how much leakage you have going on, if the root canal is causing you problems, etc. I think it's a good idea to, if you have root canals, if you have a, a mouth filled with mercury, as I did uh, when we were little, don't get me started on that one, um, make an appointment with a good biological dentist, have them do a little testing, and then you'll know. Don't be paranoid. It seems as though if you keep your diet more alkaline, these dental problems don't seem to come on in lieu of an acid. So grain acid, greens alkaline, kind of a broad coverage, but um, a more alkaline diet, a vegetable diet, uh, and these root canals and these dental amalgam problems don't seem to surface as much. Hope that helps, uh, Kathy. Thank you. Joni. <clears throat> okay, Joni. Uh, hi, Doug. I was just diagnosed with experiencing a vitreous detachment in my eye. Vitreous humor is the liquid uh, in the eye. By the way, hot tubs for fungus. It ended up correcting itself, so the doctor said not to worry. Good. I'm still concerned. Do you know what I can do for eye health? I still think one of the best products on the market, they're, they're two of my advertisers. I need to disclose that, that they're advertisers. They don't pay me per bottle sold, but they pay a monthly fee to advertise on my show. Know the cost. Two of the best products are Life Extension has, an, has several eye products, and then the NSC company, nsc24.com. The NSC company, you cannot believe when you read the ingredients in that capsule, how the, broadly they have covered it. Eye Bright, you know, all, all the herbs that really seem to help, vitamin A, et cetera, is in their product. Both inexpensive, both highly recommended. Uh, also, I had a thermography done. The results were fine, but showed that I have an overabundance of estrogen. How can I combat that? <clears throat> um, where are you getting estrogen? So many women write me who are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s and say, wow, I'm getting these scans done and I have estrogen. Joni, this will blow you away. There is an estrogenic mycotoxin made by the fusarium mold. It's called xerelinone. 
Xerelinone is a poisonous mycotoxin and it's estrogenic. Why is 1% now of all the breast cancer diagnosed in America men? Estrogen dominant men. Meat in America for the past 30 years has had this xeranol or something stronger than it in the meat with the FDA's approval. I don't know whether it's good or bad. I, I don't want to make that assessment. My role is to teach you. But if you're estrogen dominant or you're seeing an abundance of estrogen in your body, think milk and, and meat. Uh, we are plugging cows with this growth promoting xeranol. It's also called Ralgro by the drug company that makes it. We're plugging cows with this now, dairy cows, and um, and we're in, they are getting this estrogenic mycotoxin in them. Now, the European Union said, forget it. We're not eating your meat. We're not selling your meat. The whole European Union won't import our meat here in Canada, North America, Canada, and the U.S. But we just smile away. Estrogen-dominant breast cancer isn't 70% of all cancers diagnosed a estrogen dominant, doesn't one smart MD breast specialist say, hmm, why are you so estrogen dominant? I'm just saying, look, BPA, bisphenol A, plastic, you know, bottles, uh, here, plastic bottles, bisphenol A is also estrogenic. Uh, you know, can disrupt hormones. These things are called hormone disruptors. Bisphenol A to a little bit. But this xerelinone made, made by this mold is huge. It's also estrogenic and it makes a cow grow really big, really quickly. All I'm telling you is I'm not saying the FDA is wrong. I'm not saying the drug company that makes Ralgro is wrong. I am asking why we're seeing so many hormone disruptive diseases in America today. Um, and I am asking you why the smart people in the European Union won't import our meat. What do they know that we don't? Think, people. All I'm doing this show for is to turn on that little switch in the middle of your brain that says, think, gee, this guy might be onto something. I'm not saying your meat is why you have estrogen problems. But they have found traces of this in milk and there are studies now that show precocious puberty, young girls, young boys, you know, eight-year-old boys saying, howdy, Doug, and 10-year-old and girls with developing breasts or developed breasts, we got a problem in America. And shh, nobody's talking about it, but I am. And all I'm doing, I'm not implicating anyone. I'm not implicating our meat supply is harmful. I'm saying, think, maybe switch off meat and milk if you're estrogen dominant. Fish, nuts, eggs, those are other good sources of protein. Okay, good. Um, let's see, uh, doctor, oh, I hear this commonly, Carol. Doctor, the doctor said I have fatty deposits in my liver. I have lots of bumps on my stomach. I am on low income and hard to get to a uh, store to foods that I need to have at home to eat. Can you give me any ideas on what I can do? what I can drink, eat, or anything else. Help me if you can. Carol, if you will private message, I see you're on Facebook, that's good. If you will private message me, and uh, you can do that at, what is it, John? Friends, or at Know the Cause. John's finding out. Um, if you will private message me, Doug, this is Carol. I need to send you my book and the recipe book. You don't... It is on the Facebook page. Private message me. And uh, I'll send you an early Christmas gift, Carol. Thank you so much for asking. Okay, here, uh, Brent, a uh, very sharp guy. I've been hearing more and more from Brent. Hi, Doug. I asked a question yesterday about my doctor's reluctance to use Sporinox due to concern about liver toxicity. But he is willing to use Nystatin and later Diflucan along with me beginning on the Phase 1 diet. If I take these along with nano silver and beta glucan, 
would it be reasonable to get another CAT scan in about three months to see if the nodules that showed up on my CAT scan are improved and or are gone? Could you please answer this tomorrow if you have time? Uh, tomorrow would be, this is Wednesday I'm recording this, but uh, so I didn't answer it then, I'll answer it now, uh, Brent. Uh, folks, I gotta, I gotta figure this doctor went to medical school. And here's what they are taught. Pharmacology, pharmacology, microbiology, pharmacology, pharmacology, bacteriology, 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 pharmacology, mycology, the study of fungus. Shh. And here's how they learn. You mean there's thousands of antibiotics derivative of penicillium or thousands of new antibiotics on the market? Man, bacteria must be a horrible problem then, Professor. Oh yeah, bacteria is a horrible problem. Uh, you need to treat everything with an antibiotic. What about viruses? Well, there's 92 antivirals on the market, so test your patients for viruses. What about fungus, doctor? Because I know vaginal yeast and ringworm is a huge... And eh, there's 11 antifungals on the market today. Glaze over. What do they teach? That the few antifungals that are on the market today are hepatotoxic. <gasps> Your liver is going to go away if you start on these drugs. And here's the twisted irony. Nystatin is harmless. No side effects to nystatin. Nystatin is from dirt. You're paying $80 for that bottle of dirt. Thank God, it's a dirt that happens to just kill fungus. But Diflucan and Sporinox Brent, kind of the same drug. They kill different species of... Uh, John, do you have that graphic? I put a Sporinox graphic in there one time and had all the species of yeast and fungus that, that Sporinox killed. I didn't? Okay. It doesn't matter. Don't look for it. There have got to be 20 species and histoplasmosis and all these weird name uh, yeast and fungi, Cryptococcus, Candida, that Sporinox kill. Diflucan is also a systemic antifungal. Uh, they're both azoles. Diflucan is called fluconazole. Sporinox is called itraconazole, A-Z-O-L-E, antifungal drugs. Uh, and so they can both be hepatotoxic. They can both hurt the liver. So your doctor's willingness to prescribe one of them but not the other one, I gotta ask. And folks, here's the shocker. Since your doctor didn't learn about the toenail fungus drug that's now a cancer drug, what did he learn about cancer? If a drug that kills toenail and fingernail fungus is a popular drug now used for all sorts of cancers and really helping people, what's the etiology of cancer, if not fungus? Teach me. I'm hungry. They're saying that these drugs interfere with the hedgehog pathway leading to cancer. I envision sometimes in bed at night little tiny hedgehogs moving down a pathway. What in the world are our brightest scientists coming up with? A hedgehog path. That's why Sporinox works for cancer. It interrupts the hedgehog pathway. Or could it be, doc genius, that it kills fungus? Same thing it does on my toenail. So I don't understand his reluctance to prescribe it. By the way, Brent, I have added months ago, I added onto my doctor's uh, fungal protocol on my website, knowthecause.com, I've added uh, information on Sporinox down below. The problem is all of these good doctors really aren't familiar with antifungal drugs. Remember, they were taught in medical school. We learned that much about bacteria, this much about viruses, and that much about a oh, little vaginal yeast, little ringworm, little jock itch, little uh, teeny acruis, a little, you know, a, a little a foot problem with fungus, you know, athlete's foot. Stop to think about that. That's what you learned in 1992 in medical school, and today they're saying cancer and fungus have much to do with each other. They're not? Then why is their best-selling fungus-killing drug now a cancer drug? We're in trouble, folks. We're in trouble. It's one thing for you and me not to know that. It's a whole nother thing for our stethoscope brethren not to know that. They don't. Try and get to him. Try and ask for a prescription for Spornox. Brent did, and he was told, oh, I'll give you Diflucan, but I won't give you Spornox. Same thing. 
Hey, Doug, uh, this is a good one, Marinella. Marinella. How do I know if I have fungus in my body? Therein lies the question. Have you been exposed to it in the past? How do you feel? Assess your health. You can lay in bed tonight and do that. How do you feel? You know, I'm told I have restless legs or restless arms. That could be an L-tryptophan. Take L-tryptophan, the amino acid, along with B6, its co-nutrient, pyridoxine. Take them together. There's a product called, um, oh, what is that? Uh, tryptophan 5-HTP, 5-hydroxytryptophan, 5-HTP that has the B6 in it, if I recall. That might help with restless legs, restless arm syndrome, or jumping around at night. But lay there tonight and assess Marinella and everyone else. How do I feel? Mm, I'm going to be constipated in the morning. When I get out of bed, oh, my back always hurts so bad I can't put my socks on. Okay, so you've got some health quirks. What are they? And are you capable of fixing them? We're told no. I can't practice medicine because I'm not a doctor, but I can sure as heck practice it on myself. And I have found a lifestyle that has precluded up to 69 years ill health. Once in 50 years, I got the flu. I know exactly what I did to get it. I remember in Vietnam, I had malaria, and I remember when I got it. I was out in the field you know, with the Marines. I was a Navy corpsman, uh, a doc uh, uh, with the Marine Corps, the 7th Marines. I'm telling you guys, at night, I would catch mosquitoes and put them on my skin, begging them to bite me. I would rather go to 1st Medical Battalion, be treated for malaria, than have the gunshots go off and the grenades and so forth. I'm kidding you. I, I didn't hold mosquitoes. I would have if I'd have known better. But I ended up with malaria uh, back in the back. And then I went through this therapy, and my life was spared. And you know what it was? We didn't have air conditioning in Vietnam. So Tom Glenn, this great doctor from San Diego, packed ice under my arms, at the top of my legs, and naked as the day I was born, and he turned this huge fan on me. I ran a fever, 106.6. And he said, he bent down and talked to me, and he said, Doug, and I got delirious. And he said, Doug, you'll probably be sterile. Wrong. You know, um, but I'm going to try and get your temperature down to a normal level. How crude was that? Um, we didn't have the medications. We took prophylactic medication so we wouldn't get bit by the female Anopheles mosquito. How did that work out for me? How did that work out for thousands of guys who ended up with malaria? How do you know if you have fungus in your body? How do you feel? Have you been on lots of antibiotics in your life, even as a baby? Have you lived in a moldy environment? Has your work environment had mold in it? Okay. Did you drink way too? I, I did. Did you drink way too much alcohol when you were 21 to, you know, 28? Cured my post-traumatic stress from the war. Um, so we have. Do you crave sugar? That's a giveaway, folks, because in a human-fungal relationship, remember what I've told you, fungus is the dominant partner. If fungus gets heat, it's 70 in here, but it's 98.6 in here. Liquid, 70-80% of my body is water, right? Fungal hot tubs. Food, if you find yourself craving food that fungus wants, you'll know you've got a fungal condition. In your sock drawer, do you have candy hidden somewhere in your home? Okay, you sometimes, without even knowing it, if with fungi the dominant partner, when you crave sugar, you don't. It does. And it doesn't crave it. It demands it. Try and go a few days without it. As these fungi begin dying of starvation, you're not giving them grains anymore, which convert to glucose by the time they hit your belly. You're not giving them alcohol anymore. You're living a lifestyle which involves sweating. I think we detoxify through sweating. There's great far infrared saunas you can sit in for half an hour at night at home to help detoxify yourself, or you can do what I do, and that's exercise. You can drink lots and lots of water, meaning you're urinating a lot, meaning you're eliminating those toxins from your body. You can watch your diet, basically eat what fungi don't. 
I did the original work almost 50 years ago. I know what they eat. They hate tomatoes. They hate Brussels sprouts. They hate spinach. They can't stand chicken. Okay? Unless that food is impregnated, like I talked about earlier on the show, with fungal poisons, um, then you're pretty safe eating that way. And you'll find in a period of time, just by replenishing the good bacteria, if you've been on lots of antibiotics or alcohol, replenish the good bacteria with something called probiotics. Um, begin a walking program. It's cold outside now. Begin a walking program. And, uh, and then stop feeding it. And you'll know in a short period of time. How do you feel two weeks later? You feel like a million bucks? Then the answer to that, Marinella, is yes, you did have a fungal problem. Do you feel two weeks later really no different? I mean, I feel you probably didn't have a fungal problem. This isn't something you can walk into a doctor's office, have them draw a tube of blood, or you know, take some tissue on your body, and your doctor can say, give me 10 minutes, I'll be right back in, and say, okay, that's great, you don't have a fungal. It isn't like that. It takes weeks to grow. Those of you who are wanting to get cancer cells tested and so forth, it takes a while to grow out on a petri dish, a culture plate, a fungus. Laboratory technicians not only grow it, they then have to identify it. Is it a pathogenic fungi, meaning can it cause human disease? Most are non-pathogenic. Of the 75,000 that we've classified, of the million and a half that exists, imagine what we don't know about cancer, diabetes, heart disease, because there's 1.4 million more species out there making poisons, some of them, that we don't know about. So we're lying if we tell you that we know the answers in medicine. Until we've uncla unclassified or classified 1.4 million more species of fungi, we'll have thousands of mycotoxins we don't know about, and these little buggers are going to be directly linked to our ill health. Okay? So understand you're in control. Here's the coolest thing I have found in all of my years in this field. Nobody drives that car except me. I can steer it into a truck. I can pull into a bakery. I can go into a bar. I drive the truck. Ultimately, folks, you, not medical science, not pill companies, you get to decide. They're trying. They're trying very, very hard to get well people on drugs. I think that's what statin drugs were. Let's take well people, tell them they're sick, and put them, and we fell for it hook, line, and sinker. And that's going to come back and snap many of us. Don't let me take you off of drugs. Have an open, honest conversation with your doctor. What would a change diet, an exercise program, sweating, and some fungus and bacteria killing supplements, how would that change you? See, that's the important part and that's the cool part. I can't tell you. All I can do is sit here and tell you how it changed me. We're all unique, right to our thumbprints. You have to answer this question. I doubt Doug, but he seems kind of nice and he sure helped a lot of people. I wonder if after the holidays I should start his Kaufman One Diet take the caprylic acid, take the beta-glucans. This isn't expensive. It's much less expensive than that hospital stay for your kidney problem, your brain problem, your skin problem. I wonder if I can be proactive in my health. Is your doctor proactive in your health? Are the drug companies proactive in your health? Is your best friend proactive in your health? See, that's what I've learned through these years. That's tough. Sweating, I get to 500, 501, 502, 503. And I think, wow, I kicked my own rear. You know why? Because the people I'm going to talk to in exactly 40 minutes are really important to me. And this much wor must work. It must work for me so that they can have that switch in their brain that they can flip on and say, this makes sense. I am running from dentist to dentist, doctor to doctor, psychologist to psychologist. Maybe I am in control of that steering wheel. God bless you folks. I'll see you next week on Tuesday, and I'll teach you a little bit more about what we're talking about here. Do what the Center for Disease Control asks doctors to do. Two words.
think fungus. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.